You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's about time we take a look at the papers and see what the headlines are there. And maybe you can go grab a copy to read more details. Exactly. We're going to be kicking off with uh, stories on the This Day newspapers. Um, the lead story there, of course, is talking about the president, uh, Buhari, and others preach uh, unity and, um, and hope, rather, despite challenges. Uh, president also says, let's chart a new path to national greatness. Um, also on the This Day newspapers, uh, well, a continuation of that story says, it's senseless for petrol to be cheaper in Nigeria than in Saudi Arabia. We, we've, we've had you know, a long conversation about this already, but we'll, we'll mm. go on. Um, a few other stories on the This Day newspapers. Policy makers and business leaders predict bright future for Nigeria. Um, and also, speakers at uh, a global virtual commemoration is also uh, um, there on the front page of the This Day newspapers. Not very many stories. Uh, COVID-19 prompts BPE to read um, or readjust privatization timelines. Um, those are some of the major ones under the state. Yeah, most of the issues we've discussed already on the breakfast this morning. But I, I'd just like to reiterate something that stood out for me in a conversation here on Plus TV Africa. Uh, one of the guests talked about the fact that in the president's speech, he um, he he emphasized building strong foundations that will uh, last the country that will be, I'm just paraphrasing now, yes. that he will be remembered for. And then the guest was, how can we still be building foundation 60 years on? So we should try and build on what is already on the ground or find a way to create a new foundation um, that will stand uh, the test of time. Well, you know, where, you know, the challenge would be, you know, with that is, um, if you're talking about building on what we already have, a lot of people would argue that um, the foundation is faulty. That's so, what I said. You know, well, we, we could start a new foundation or we can build on what we already have, but we have to make that decision. And that's where the together came from. Because initially I was wondering, why are we emphasizing why are we emphasizing together um, when there is so much worries, divisiveness, uh, rancor, and insecurity? Shouldn't we try to find a way to address these issues? And if we collectively decide that we want to stay together, perfect. It has to be intentional. And, yeah. and so, so this is one thing that um, I have always um, said is, you know, uh, is one of the challenges that we have. Um, it, it goes beyond making statements. It goes beyond press releases. It goes beyond addressing the nation once a year. Um, there has to be an intentional um, move by the presidency, by the administration to heal all these fault mm. lines, to, to heal all these wounds across the country. If it is not intentionally done, um, and, we're not and going anywhere. We're not going obviously. anywhere. And, and people would always, Nigerians are not blind. Indeed. People would always be able to spot those little details here and there that show the divisions that you know, exist across the country. Employment opportunities across the country and, and, the, and the likes. There's so much. Um, okay, I understand we have our guest for today, Aisha Yusufu, the co convener of Bring Back Our Girls Group. Uh, she was out and about yesterday as well. Um, if what I see in the news is anything to go by, thank you for joining us on the breakfast. Thank you so much for having me. All right, um, I think we can kick start with a conversation on. Uh, the presidency, one of the stories on the This Day newspapers this morning, the presidency, uh, the presidency, I beg your pardon, uh, talking about healing and uh, uh, preaching unity uh, despite the challenges that we are currently facing. So let's start with your thoughts on uh, the administration's body language with regards to unity and hope uh, despite the challenges. Uh, um... The president isn't, the president, his administration isn't uh, preaching any hope, uh, rather it's the opposite. Uh, they are not only preaching hopelessness, but they are also ensuring that there's hopelessness uh, in, in the country, there's despondency, 
uh, in the country. People have, have been illusioned. And the words of the president, if you look, listen to his independent speech, there were there were a lot of divisive uh, statements. There were a lot of uh, aggressive uh, uh, statements. And uh, and the way he went on, and as usual, the president blamed everybody uh, and every administration but his own. And to, to be frank, his administration has been the worst uh, in, in everything. So what near destruction was the president talking about when he has uh, uh, single-handedly destroyed the na nation with his words, with his actions, with his inactions, with his policies, and, with, and um, almost everything. So there's no, there's no uh, uh, P, uh, unity, there's no hope uh, being uh, preached uh, by the president. Rather, is divisiveness that we have seen uh, from President Mohamed Buhari's uh, late administration. All right, let, let's look at the Pudge newspaper. PDP govs tackle Buhari over attack on Obasanjo, Jonathan Yardua. Uh, those are the big names there. Uh, there are two writers. President says, ex-president presided over Nigeria's near destruction, in quotes. Buhari regime divisive, leading Nigeria to extreme decay. That's PDP uh, Gov's um, just above the masthead. We have FG will complete $1.6 billion Lagos Ibado Railway December. That's uh, the minister, Amechi, speaking. You find details of that story on page 17 of the paper. And on page 8, you see a continuation of conversations. Uh, independence, uh, Obasanjo absent as Gwon Jonathan celebrate with Buhari. More, <laughs> more uh, economic efforts, I guess. Uh, on page 23, FG inaugurates survival fund for 333,000 artisans, transporters, uh, those are some of the stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, before we go to others, uh, let's uh, get to your talk on the absence of some of these names. Um, so, ca can you take that again? What names are you talking about? Um, uh, the absence of names? Obasan, you're absent as Gwon Jonathan celebrates with Buhari. And then we also have PDP Govs tackle Buhari over attack on Obasan, Jonathan Yaradua. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much for, for that clarification. Uh, the thing is that uh, Obasan, is not known, former president Obasan, is not known as one to be. Uh, how do I put it as uh, as a statement that that wants to be seen with any government in, in power and also wants uh, to have uh, how do I put it certain or to be at the table? He has already been at the table. He doesn't need to be there. And for me, uh, one of the things that I take out from the pictures is the fact that you know you see former President uh, Jonathan and 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 present uh, President Buhari. They were together. Their wives were there. They were having fun. They were laughing. But come to think about it, his supporters, they, they, sorry, their supporters are still fighting each other five years on. After 2019, they are fighting proxy war. They don't see eye to eye. They want to kill each other. But these are people who have given them bad governance in different doses. You know, they have fun, uh, they have fun together. Uh, others want to be seen any government in, in power, for example, former uh, Gawan, every every government, he has a way of politically being correct with them. It's not about the people. But that is his own uh, personal thing. He's no longer uh, a public uh, a, a servant right now. So he can do whatever it is uh, that, that needs to be done. But like I had said earlier, uh, that statement on near destruction, uh, President Buhari has destroyed the country more than every, any other one. That, that has been there, both in his words and, 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 and different things. One headline I would like to take is this one of nursing mother detained in Lagos Hospital over 95,000 Naira deaths. I mean, this is a country that we are in. 60 years later, a nursing mother cannot go and give birth and go back home. She has to be detained. There's no good medical head. Uh, uh, there's no, our healthcare system is in shambles. We saw what happened during the COVID-19 uh, lockdown when uh, the, when the country uh, was on lockdown and people couldn't fly abroad to assess medical uh, care, the, the rich were also dying. So when it were being told that, oh, it's your time, when you're poor, you don't have access to good healthcare system, we find a situation whereby those people who had looted us 
who go outside to go and get this healthcare system. They couldn't, they couldn't get it. This same woman, I'm sure in her state, the uh, the, 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 the AF, former governors of her, her state are, are having a part of their retirement benefit is that they can assess uh, health care anywhere in the world at her own expense. And here we are. She can't get that. And when you tell people to come out and protest, they don't want to come out and protest because they are afraid of dying. Meanwhile, they are dying every day from bad governance and corruption. Uh, tell us a bit about your experience uh, yesterday with the march. Where you, because we're looking at a report also on the front page that says protest um, mm -hmm. over zealous uh, cop brutalizes punch uh, journalists on the front page. Of the, I don't know if you can see that. So I just wanted to get your yeah. your impression of the protests yesterday. For me, uh, the pressure, uh, the pressure for me is the fact that the government is seriously afraid of, of the voices of the people and they know the power of the people and they know that the moment Nigerians decide and leave if they are fear away and pour out on the streets in their millions, they're going to ensure that the right thing is done and anyone who does not want to do the right thing, that government will be brought down. And it's as simple as that. And when people are talking about protests, it's also a legitimate way to get a government to resign. And so because of that, they are clamping so hard on protesters. Yesterday I was in Abuja, I was part of the protest in Abuja. You could see the number of security agents that were deployed to, to, to that protest heavily and wearing bulletproof with bulletproof uh, bands and you're wondering we have all of the security agents the police are there why are they not in southern Kaduna? why are they not in Borno? why are they not in Katsuna? why are they not in Zafara? Uh, if you if, if a week ago or, or thereabout about eight uh, more than eight uh, police uh, 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 men were killed more than uh, it, it, and then I think soldiers, about four or five of them were killed. Those are human beings with families. These are your men. But yet, you did nothing ab about ab about that. You haven't even come out hard on, on the terrorists where you're working uh, you, you're working hard to brutalize protesters. We see what has happened with the, with the punch uh, photojournalists. What was his offense? For just being there to cover the event? That's what journalists do. But guess what? As these things are happening and the country people are quiet, the, the journalists aren't talking as much as they want to. Some of them, because their publishers are part of, either the publishers or owners are part of political class and they can't do anything, they can't say as much as they can. We, give, we continue to give the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the security agencies and the government uh, enabling environment for them to be dictatorial. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, uh, in Lagos, over 20 protesters were taken away. Uh, yesterday, I spoke with the uh, commissioner of police of Lagos. I called him. I told him, look, citizens who haven't done anything have been taken away by your men, and you need to do something about it. He asked for all their names should be sent. I sent the names to him. I sent to him the police station where, where, where they were at. And I kept calling him again yesterday. I couldn't reach him. This morning, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to be on that case. Citizens have a right to protest. It is better for those we know to come out and protest than the ones that will be uh, hiding away, that will come out, that will protest by attacking the, the nation as bandits, as, as terrorists, and, and, and all of that. We need to do better in our country. Indeed. All right, and um, let's now quickly move to the nation newspapers. One of the top stories there is uh, from Edo State, uh, the APC uh, candidate in the election. Uh, Usage Zayamu says on Edo poll, we are collecting facts, uh, says Zayamu. Sec uh, security agents and revolution now protesters clash. Um, also on um, the nation, it says um, IPOB sit at home, uh, call flops in the southeast as a uh, reps dispute 9.3 million naira monthly salary claim. Um, the nation uh, newspaper, more stories. Uh, Nine million jobs coming as AFDB and Microsoft partner with government. The main story there says, uh, um, or says rather, from the presidency, uh, Buhari, no going back on petrol subsidy removal. A few others that I can quickly also squeeze in. Marketers, uh, Sanusi, back government action. Uh, the PDP say, uh, says, don't compare Saudi with Nigeria. Um, I'm going to take one or two others. Uh, floods send 53,000 53, people to IDP camps. Um, and uh, on, on those 2020, Akiri Dulu, my deputy, plans to rig in Ilaje. Um, it also says here, 
low voter turnout likely as a monarch's back governor. Um, and the last one here, it says uh, on the nation. Okay, I think that's all that we're going to be taking. Uh, let's go back to uh, Aisha Yusufu. Ah, so, so I'm sorry, I'm going to take one that at the bottom here that you've, you've not read out. Gang, uh, girl, 11 gang raped oh, to yeah. death in Lagos. Yeah. The issue of rape is a serious issue in this country. And we're, we're playing kids' glove to it. And I think we, we need to shut down this country and ensure that this issue of rape is addressed or else we are not going to do anything else. It's, it's pathetic. It is heinous. She's 11 for crying out loud. What were they looking for in her? They gang rape her and they kill her. Th this is becoming something else. Children are being raped. Some of them, toddlers, some of them are just even infants. Less than you find that children less than a week, some of them a few a, a few a few months old are being raped. What is going on in Nigeria? What is wrong with us? Why are we not taking uh, all of these uh, issues uh, seriously? Hoodlums kill policemen in in rivers. I think that's River State, right? Again, killings and deaths in Nigeria. Where are the security agents? Where are the policemen and women? Why are they now angry over it? Why are they focused on on, on protesters? Buhari says no going back from petrol subsidy removal. What happened in 2016? Did Buhari not remove subsidy? Did Nigerians not su su uh, support the remover, even though the prices were increased so much? So what is he talking about? If there is subsidy remover, why is the federal government still the one fixing price? Why is it that the, the price of petroleum, the, the pump price in Lagos is the same as Sokoto, is the same with the one in Borno, is the same with the one in Kano, is the same with the one in Edo State? Who is paying uh, the differences? What is the petroleum equalization fund still doing in the business if there's no uh, so if there's subsidy removal? If government has deregulated, why do they still have business in that? Diesel is, uh, there's no subsidy on diesel. And the government doesn't fix the price. It's people who bring it in that determine how the price is. The government should take their hands off it. And we do not trust the Buhari administration because repeatedly it has lied to the people. In 2016, it said it, it increased the price. It said it had removed subsidy. But yet, no subsidy was removed. All right. Can you also quickly uh, speak on the uh, uh, sit-at-home um, order by the IPOB? Um, that, uh, according to reports, uh, flopped in the southeast. It will flop. There's, there, there are not ways. What are you sitting at home for? There's a problem and you're sitting at home. The only way sit at home order will work is if the whole of the country were sitting at home. And for me, I I don't know what's wrong with I I don't know what's wrong with Enam you, Kano. You, you, you have a number. You, you have leadership. Instead of being strategic about the leadership, it's all about, you know, personal things, being worshipped and all of that. There is so much power that can be used for the good of the, the nation or the good of that region. Like I have said, I've mentioned this uh, uh, sometime before. Why is IPOP doing stay away, sit, sit at home, don't participate in election, don't do all of that? You're losing all you need to do, you have the numbers, get the right people, let them contest for election, let them be in public uh, offices, let them call the shots from there. If you want separation, whatever it is, do it from, from, the, from, from, the, uh, from the point of power rather than from the point of helplessness. And I think for me, I, I'm, I'm not surprised. This is not the time for, sit, for to be sitting at home. This is the time to come out and be on this. And not just about IPOP, but for every Nigerian. We are suffering. You're dying. You say you don't want to die at protest, but yet you're being killed every day by bad governance and corruption, sadly. All right, uh, let's also then... Uh... Yeah, let's see the Business Day newspaper this morning. Um, we have Nigeria declines in volume of movie production, soars in quality as DVD gives way to cinemas, streaming platforms. That's on the business day. Uh, some cherry news, don't you think, Aisha? Absolutely. It's an amazing news. And for us, uh, it's always uh, quality over quantity. And, you know, Nigeria is going to take its place uh, with this more year. We're already the second largest producer, but we want to go beyond in terms of quality and Nigeria winning all of those awards and getting uh, or, or, uh, the, the necessary uh, funds that we need to get from there. The, the movie industry, just simply for me, it's all about the, the creativity of Nigerians, the amazing capacity and capabilities of Nigeria, that irrespective of 
not having government support, irrespective of all that fight, their work always being pirated, fighting piracy and all of that. They've been able to soar, they've been able to grow. I, I grew up in a, in a situation where but there were no Nigerian films. We were all watching foreign films. The Nigerian music was, it wasn't there. And today, uh, as, 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 as a, you know, Am I middle age? No, I'm not a middle age. Almost middle age. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at a place where, you know, our music is soaring, our, our, our themes are soaring. And for me, it's amazing. And it simply says to us that by the time we all have our acts together, Nigeria is going to be a great and amazing country that will take its place within the, 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 the committee of nations, the great ones. And all we need to do is to ensure that we continue fighting for a better and a greater Nigeria and we continue ensuring that we have the right people who are going to give us the right policies for us to ensure that we develop. Nigerians are quite innovative and that's the reason why anywhere we go in the world, we always excel. Yes, we always certainly excel. Thank you very much, Aisha Yusufu, for your time and your input. Let's keep talking. Nigeria will definitely be better. Yeah, absolutely. Nigeria must work in our lifetime, by the grace of God. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for Have a great us. day. I was going to ask her if you had any um, encouraging words, you know, to quickly... Uh, share with uh, Nigeria. I mean, it's, like so it is only somebody, that's my interpretation of her energy and her concern. It's, it's only somebody who is truly committed, who sees something good in this country that persistently yes. speaks up, even when a lot of persons say, oh, you talk too much or you do this too much. She continues to speak. That can only be commitment in my thinking to it's, the growth it's, uh, of It says a lot about um, yeah. her personality and about, you know, what we should, you know, want from every Nigerian. That passion um, is what every single Nigerian should have if we are asking for a better country. Um, I've country. always, you know, yeah. sensed some level of laziness. You know, a lot of people have lost interest. Um, you've not just bothered enough to demand for a better Nigeria. Indeed. All right, we'll go on a quick break. The breakfast continues shortly. <laughs>